Ladies and gentlemen, I have returned to YouTube to play this wonderful game called Madden 21. Except I haven't actually made a video until now because the game was terrible. Until today. So I turned on my Xbox, downloaded the 3GB update, 2.8GB of which are Colin Kaepernick's afro, and started up the game. Then I came across this. Now, I own the game. I bought this awful excuse of a new game for the full retail price on release and I don't even know what a trial version is. So I figure I'll select upgrade to the full version because I want the full version of this game, whatever that is. And to be fair, I'm thinking now this might explain why when I play a player franchise mode, I have no choice but to control the entire team when I'm not on the field. So maybe I didn't have the full version with all the features until now. Maybe an actually functioning game that makes sense is part of the full version. With high hopes of finally playing the full version, not some Madden 20 roster update with three new animations for one game mode, The Yard, I selected upgrade to full version. Now, I was confused at first because the result was immediate, no downloads needed, it just took me to a store page where I was allowed to press play to then be sent into the full version of the game. Now, it looks exactly the same as the one time I played it on release day, having not been back since, but I knew something was different. Without even having to open the mode, I knew they had fixed franchise mode, and I went over to the place where it was fixed, the list of free agents. And in that list, there he was. 25% afro, 75% face of peaceful protests, 100% overrated. Colin Kaepernick, the man who hasn't played football in four years, held one workout which was by all accounts disappointing, is the 15th highest rated quarterback in the game. Now, it's clear why Kaepernick has this rating. EA was scared that if they put him in the game again, but make his rating realistic, aka low 70s at a maximum, everyone will be mad at them because they'll be just as bad as the NFL franchises not giving Kaepernick a chance to prove he's worthy of a backup quarterback position in the league. What they forgot is that everyone is already mad at them because their game is a burning pile of garbage. And the weak attempt to capitalize on the rise of social justice movements this year isn't going to fix anything or win anybody over. Kaepernick has been out of the league for four years. Now they could have put him back in any one of those years, but they've waited until now. Now listen, I'm all for him being in the game, but an 80 overall, one less than future Hall of Famer Ben Roethlisberger, who in his last fully healthy season was an 88 overall, the exact same as last season's leader in passer rating, comeback player of the year and pro bowler, Ryan Tannehill, Really? Now I'm not going to make a bunch of comparisons because Madden's quarterback ratings are beyond awful as it is. Gardner Minshew in only 12 starts threw only 500 yards less than Kyler Murray who played 16 games, won 6 games rather than Murray's 5, threw more touchdowns to only half as many interceptions and Minshew plays for the Jaguars. He's a 70 rating whilst Murray is a 77. The ratings are garbage. But my problem with Kaepernick's rating is that it is significantly better than when Madden last honestly rated him in Madden 17, when they had absolutely no reason to kiss his butt. Now, please excuse my bad language there, you know, I just, I get a little bit heated. Now, Kaepernick finished that season with a 75 overall, 81 short accuracy, 77 medium, and 74 deep. Oh, and a, and a way too high throw power of 94. The only thing that they've done right is make that lower, but still not low enough. So in four years of not playing, Kaepernick has improved by five overall, has five better shot accuracy, two better medium, and seven better deep. Now to be fair, deep accuracy was changed in recent years and everyone's has gone up a little, but most people go down in overall rating compared to previous years, not up. Now Madden did do the exact same thing with Gronkowski, giving him a ridiculous rating in Madden 21, but he did enter Madden 19, the last game he was in, as a 99 overall. So they have at least dropped him since the last time he was in the game. But as I said at the beginning of the video, the inclusion of Kaepernick has actually saved franchise mode, because now 
one of the teams that you don't control that has a second year quarterback that played decently last year. So Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, Kyler Murray, Gardner Minshew, or even teams with third year quarterbacks they're clearly happy with. One of those teams is going to sign Colin Kaepernick and make him their starter. And what am I going to do? Lower Kaepernick's stats to stop him getting a starting job? Who am I? Roger Goodell and the legion of white NFL owners? No, I can't do that. I have to leave him in and then let that happen. And in that way, it's an entirely new franchise mode experience. Never before have I dreaded what the Madden computer coaches will do and who they will sign. This year, finally, I can be annoyed at the fact that a player I would have liked to see potentially develop never gets a chance in the game. But why stop there? Franchise mode is good now, with Kaepernick's afro in the game, but it can always be better. And here are my suggestions on how to improve it even more. See, why stop at Kaepernick? Why not bring back Johnny Manziel? And whilst we're at it, bring in Andrew Luck. My franchise mode won't be complete until I've got Andrew Luck winning MVP with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But let's keep going. The running back market looks pretty empty. Why doesn't EA add, I don't know, Ray Rice? Give him a nice 98 stiff arm and six awareness and you've got a replacement back for half the teams in the league. Wide receiver, Des Bryant. No, genuinely, why not have Des Bryant? But more importantly, Antonio Brown. I can't keep track of if he's retired or not, but who cares? Let me make the decision on whether I want to sign him or not. And at tight end, you've brought back Rob Gronkowski. Why not bring back Aaron Hernandez? There's no reason to not have him hanging around on the free agent list until someone decides to pick him up. And with the amount of dead weight players on rosters, Hernandez will fit right in. Now you can always fill out the defensive end group and Greg Hardy is a decent player as far as I'm concerned. Chuck him in the game. Then moving down the list at cornerback, DeAndre Baker will no doubt be removed from the game soon enough. And I'm arguing they should bring him right back in. He's only 23, so when he does complete his minimum of a 10-year jail sentence, he'll only be 33, and that's the same age as Jason McCarty, so you'll get at least one more season out of him for sure. And at safety, Earl Thomas will eventually be a free agent once Madden actually updates their rosters. I guess they've just been too busy tracing Kaepernick's tattoos. But once he's a free agent, I have a suggestion for another free agent. At strong safety, Earl Thomas's brother. So you can add a nice one-two punch to your team. You know, just ask their lady friend. Now the kickers, they're fine because Vinatieri's still in the game and nobody cares about punters. So that's basically it. Those are my suggestions for improving franchise mode even more, though it is basically complete now anyway. So to just give it a test, I created a league with the one team in Madden that doesn't need a new quarterback. And I simmed ahead to week one of the regular season. And so the search began and it took three teams. The Denver Broncos, no longer happy with the promise Drew Locke showed last year, add Colin Kaepernick as their starter. Now, the addition of Kaepernick added to the realism of a franchise league that not only saw the Lions, Browns, and the Cowboys making it to the playoffs, but a Super Bowl between the Browns and Cowboys. Now, considering that the game will push out this kind of Super Bowl in the first season, I can safely say that forcing Kaepernick onto an NFL roster by making his overall unrealistically and disproportionately high does not make this game any less realistic. As a matter of fact, it's more realistic as the only reality I can imagine where the Cowboys play the Browns for the Super Bowl this year is the same reality where Kaepernick is also starting all 16 games for an NFL team this season. So hey, that's the end of the video. My first video in quite a long time, hopefully, but no promises, hopefully um, I'll be able to make some more videos as the season comes now and as Madden 21 potentially at some point becomes a half decent game at least decent enough to you know play a few things on maybe a little bit of face of the franchise stuff like that um I don't even know who's left waiting for any videos that I've ever made it's a bit of a shame that I've had to give it up to this extent but potentially I can do a little bit more now hopefully make a few videos here and there again as a new season comes out there's more to talk about as a new game is out there's unfortunately right now only negative things to talk about and I didn't want to immediately just add on to negative discourse. I figured people already had plenty enough to say and that is it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll make some more videos in the short term future. Fingers crossed.